was not passed. Why? Because pharmaceutical lobbyists and all these other people and the criminal, uh, uh, you know, the criminal implications that the uh, Department of Justice and the military that carry out these these programs covertly don't want this kind of bill passed. They don't want this blowback in, in their in their realm. Okay, to read on. Another illustration of the precarious coverage of the common rule occurred in 1995 when it became known that researchers from the Center for Reproductive Health at the University of California, Irvine, were fertilizing humans and implanting these in different mothers without the consent of the donor. This research was not being funded by any federal agency, however. The National Institute of Health was funding more than $20 million worth of other research at, at the university. Even though several internal and external investigations by the university and the district attorney were being conducted on this experiment. A clarifying moment occurred when investigators from OPRR visited the University of California, Irvine, early last year. These investigators reminded university officials of the common rule. The fact that the university had agreed to apply it to all research conducted there, though OPRR's assurance process and the NIH was currently funding a good deal of the research at the institution. Within a week, OPRR's visit, the university took public action to halt the research and formally investigate the researchers. I'm sure they didn't prosecute any of them because none of these criminals, ladies and gentlemen, none of these criminals who have operated on anyone illegally and outside the law, and even because of one point, in fact, that there is no law, okay, just the Nuremberg Code and some agreements under the common rule, and they even dis disregard that to protect people, citizens of the United States of America and people in other foreign countries against these medical and evil criminals who will take your life and make you a research guinea pig. They will do it. They will do it. I am a witness to it. I am someone that that has happened to. Believe me, I tell you now, if you are one, you can contact us at www.freedomfightersforamerica.com, and we will try to help you with this. But for the people who don't understand, this is, does exist, and this is from the senator's mouth right now. I continue on. On October 10, 1994, the New York Times reported on a New York doctor who adopted two types of drugs approved by FDA for cancer treatment and stomach ulcers for unapproved use to perform non-surgical abortions. The article quotes from the doctor saying that um, in 121 of 126 cases, his approach was successful. In five cases to complete the procedure. Because the drugs were FDA approved and the doctor was not funded or connected to federally sponsored research, no IRB or approval, informed consent procedures were required. Apparently, each patient signed a three-page consent form, but this was not approved by an IRB, according to the Times. One, once FDA approves a drug, physicians are generally allowed to use it for off-label purposes. That means they can just give it to anyone. They can give this to anyone, your children, my children, your parents, my parents, anyone. Now, Mr. President, some of the issues discussed in these articles are problems with how the common rule itself is being applied. Some of these rules illustrate the gaps in the common rule coverage. My legislation will address both the coverage and the application of the common rule. Now, how precisely would the legislation work? It would require all research facilities to register with HHS. Registration shall include per statements of principles governing the research facility. It is uh, to conduct human subject research. Second, designation of the official responsible for all human subjects. Third, designation of membership roster of IRBs. And fourth, a test station and the research facility is complying with the protection requirements of the common rule. The legislation includes a grandfather provision for all research entities which currently have negotiate project assurances with HHS. The vast majority of research facilities have such assurances. 
The legislation contains a three-year registration requirement. The legislation includes criminal penalties for failure to comply with the act. Therefore, if enacted, it would be a felony offense to experiment on someone without their informed consent. Folks, this was in 1997. This bill did not pass. This is 2009, okay? Twelve years have gone by, and people are still vulnerable, and people are still tortured, and people are still operated on against the will in the United States of America. Under a constitution which these politicians and George Bush has stated is just a piece of paper, and this is how they treat us, and this is how they're treating our country. For money, everything is money. They don't care about our laws. They don't care about us. All they care about is this one world global government, you know, uh, Illuminati thing. And the best that, that's taking place in this country, I'll read on. The intent, therefore, of this legislation is twofold. First, to fill in the gaps of coverage of the common rule, requiring all research involving human subjects to abide by the rule. And second, to elevate the importance of conducting research ethically. The bill provides criminal fines and penalties for failure to comply with the requirements of this law and by extension 45 CFR 46. Finally, Mr. President, my legislation will codify a recommendation which the Advisory Committee on Radiation Experiments made regarding research on subjects. Specifically, the advisory committee recommend that informed consent of all human subjects of classified research be required and that such requirement not be subject to waiver or exemption under current rule and executive order. It is possible to waive informed consent and IRB review for classified research. Well, that's just well because that law wouldn't have meant anything to anyone like you or I uh, who are victims by people who have classified research and they can operate on you and still don't need any permission to do it and still manage to, to, to harm your life and change your life with this type of activity. So this, these laws apparently were no darn good either, Mr. Glenn, because under state secrets and under intelligence, which it's not, they can take a human being, a citizen in this country, and literally, literally turn them into something else, literally. They can try to wreck you with this for money. And they do it. And they do it. And if you're a whistleblower, they'll do it to you real quick today to shut, try to shut you up and torture you and, and not allow anyone not allow anyone to help you discover the evidence of what they've done to you. And there are many people in the group of Freedom Fighters for America and others. Okay? Well, I'm not going to read any more about this because basically there's another sentence or two. And... Um, this is really a serious problem we have going on in our country right now. It really is. And uh, we're going to take a short break, okay, uh, a very short break, as a matter of fact. And uh, we will be back. Uh, we are going to read a couple of stories about um, some uh, victims of this type of experimentation. Uh, so this is Take Back America, Freedom, sponsored by Freedom Fighters for America Radio, and we'll be back momentarily. You will not hear anything on here for about a minute or so, okay? So just stand by. There's nothing wrong with the recording, and we'll be right back.
by ladies and gentlemen. This is the 